as an international student, how much are you paying in tuition fees? Um, so I'm paying like for the first year, I'm paying around 18, uh, 18 and a half K. I pay 20,000. They are like four to five times they're charging higher on the international students. Universities and colleges get a lot of their money from tuition fees and international students, they pay the most. I think about 19,000 for a one year program. I still feel like, oh my God, I'm paying so much. So when the federal government talks about putting a first ever cap on the number of international students to ease the pressure on housing. Certain communities are having uh, difficulties managing with the population growth that it's attracted. We have to address this in a smart way. It includes potentially looking at a cap. That could create a whole other problem. Here's why. Back in the day, universities and colleges received more of their money from governments, a lot more. In 1982, public money covered 83.1% of university funding, but by 2022, government funding was about half that, at 46%. So universities and colleges had to make up that shortfall somehow. One way, international students. The number of them keeps rising, from 351,330 in 2015 to about 900,000 this year. They're pushing the beam on us that, you know, you're coming so well. Like you're the ones who are letting us in. Institutions are a little bit frustrated. Professor Dale McCartney focuses on the policies for international students in Canada. Governments told them, we're not going to give you as much money anymore. You have to find it somewhere else. So they did. And now governments are saying, well, why did, you know, what have you done? And while all students are now paying more, with tuition fees making up 32.5% of university funding compared to 8.6% in 1982, the rates international students pay are going higher faster. Think about this, more than one third of those tuition fees Canadian universities take in come from international students, even though they make up just 17% of post-secondary students in Canada. I, I feel like international students play a huge role in the economy, so we don't get enough credit for that. Consider this, students from India will provide Ontario's colleges with $2 billion in operating revenue this year. That's more than those colleges get from the provincial government. International student fees aren't regulated in the same way as other students, and they're also not subsidized by provincial governments. So in 2021, international undergrads paid an average annual tuition of $32,041, five times the average for a domestic undergrad at $6,610. We call that an investment when we go here for study abroad, so we, so we sacrifice that. So if there was a cap, depending on what it looked like, it's not like this money is automatically going to come from somewhere else. And that could mean trouble for a lot of colleges and universities. If the government announced a cap tomorrow, it would be disastrous. It would mean lost jobs. It would mean um, shutting down programs. But if this is about the housing crisis, would a cap help? Some in the know say yes. Uh, last summer, for instance, we saw rents in London, Ontario go up about 20% in eight weeks uh, just because of that supply-demand mismatch. Economist Mike Moffat spoke at the recent Liberal Cabinet retreat, where a potential cap first made news. We just need to buy ourselves a little bit of time until we can get this housing mess sorted out and then we can start seeing those numbers grow again. Experts say part of it comes down to building more housing, both on and off campus, and for universities and colleges to think more carefully about whether there is housing for all the students they're admitting. I honestly don't think that a student visa cap is gonna produce any, any immediate results. Luisa Sotomayor is director of the City Institute that focuses on urban planning at York University. It will be really hard to implement. It will be really hard Hard to decide what institutions would have a reduced number of um, uh, visas approved and which ones would not. I think that the fact that the governments are not taking responsibility for whom should supply the student housing uh, is highly problematic. University and college associations have put out statements denouncing the idea of a cap. No wonder international students bring vibrancy to a campus and frankly, the schools need the money. If there is an aggressive cap or limiting on the number of international students, governments are going to have to fill that fiscal gap uh, at the college or university level, or else they're going to find themselves in, in difficult financial situations. And that's something Ottawa is going to have to keep in mind. The international student program is a very good thing for Canada, but we just need to do it in a more organized way.